So if you guys are this far into a deck, it would definitely be a wise time investment to take this cover off of this gearbox and make sure there is actually some grease in here. Because obviously once you put it on the tractor, it's not as easy to work on. Especially with it sitting vertical right here, you can uh, can really put grease in it really easy or like a grease oil mix in it if you want. Normally I just put grease in it. And what happens a lot of times is the grease gets hard. Now this grease isn't hard, but as you can tell, it's all slung away from the gears. I can't really tell if it looks chunky or not. Let me, let me grab a screwdriver here. Yeah, it doesn't look chunky. It's all, it's all fairly pliable. Now there's not a lot of grease in it. Looks like people have added some grease to this over time because there's some, like some tan clear grease and some black grease and anything else. So what I'm gonna do? I don't have a whole lot of. I only got this much grease left in this grease gun. I'm just going to stand here and pump some grease in here until either A, I get tired of it, or B, I run out of grease. And it should be alright. The other thing, it's a good thing to check, is make sure this nut's actually tight. I've seen quite a few of them nuts come out on the main gear there. And when that drops down in there, that will cause some havoc. There's not if it does. Trust me. I think I'm going to finish out this grease tube in here. Is what I'm going to do. Because over time, this grease leaks out. And I don't know if you guys could see or not, but there's some stuck to the cover on this. You can tell this grease I'm putting in here is a whole lot more uh, flowy than the the old stuff that's in here. But the old stuff isn't too bad considering. Okay, well, I am out of grease now. So I'll have to put some more grease in here before I can finish this. And mine here, the gasket is still good. So, and you can spin it if you want. Not going to hurt it. You can see what it does. It kind of starts pulling up the grease and feeding it down in. But uh, this grease it actually does flow around a good bit, considering. So I may, maybe I ought to do this. What did I do with my big screwdriver already? I didn't go anywhere, did I? Oh, right here. As the old fellow used to say, wait till you get old and you start losing stuff. I'm already losing stuff. I'm 27 now. So I'm just going to mix, mix the old and the new grease up here a little bit. Try and get kind of a uniform consistency. It will. It will circulate in there, but if you help it along now, it may save you some some havoc later, we'll say. And that's what this channel is all about, helping you guys fix your own stuff, right? I don't get paid to make these videos, I do it for fun. Now the next trick is, can I do this without dragging grease across here? Mainly. It's a lot cleaner, a whole lot less grease I gotta clean off of there now. Alright, now we'll put the cover back on. You know, a lot of people like RW3 Dog has commented, I use this electric impact on about everything now. It is so much faster. 
once you get the bolts started, don't drop them on the floor and lose them. Hopefully I'm still in frame. I don't think I moved this. I'm zoomed in pretty good though. You know, I'll shut the camera off and start over again when I go to start putting this this carriage frame on here. There gonna be a lot of talking, a fair bit of swearing. Honestly, putting this carriage on is the worst part of the whole job. Okay, guys, so that's handled. Next up, sticking it on the deck. So I wanted to give you guys a pretty accurate representation of how the belt runs on these Gravely decks. And why there's such a pain to change the, uh, uh, change the belt on, put a new belt on, you know, etc. And the only thing that's not on here is the main drive pulley for the carriage, which which goes right about in this this here region. And I think it goes about like that, roughly. I think. Pretty sure I got this belt routed right. Yeah, I think so. Okay, basically. This one's turning this way, goes down through here, and then turns that, goes that way. Yeah, that's right. And basically, what you, when you adjust the belt, this slides this over, which takes the slack out of here. And that's how all that works. Now, as you can see, with this old style idler pulley, on a new style deck, there is about this much space uh, left on these spacers that hold the carriage up. Now on the new style decks the arm is completely different. It has an arm that comes off of here and there's actually a spring above it. Above it, below it, I think it's above it. And it takes up the whole, basically the whole space. Uh, it's a flat arm from what I remember. I just went over and looked on the deck on the 430, which is a new style 40 inch. This is an old style 40 inch. So you guys get the general idea. I'm going to have to put uh, put a bolt up through that one. And obviously, they're all going to need bolts up through. Um, other than that, I can mainly set this thing in place. Take this out. Obviously, like I said, you guys can tell the spacers go where the four holes are at. Uh, this probably won't quite stay here because I'm trying to keep taking that spacer out. So I'll have to leave that one off. So, what I'll do here. This was in, there's actually two sets of holes in the back, let me show you. Let's set on top of the belt. It's all on like that, more or less. Backspacer could move. Okay. So the way I do this when I do it, is more or less Good idea to not have the spring on at all. Did I just knock that over with all the washers on it? Or anything? No. Hmm. I wanted to put. 
okay, I can still swing it up. But, uh, especially with this style idler pulley and everything, you want to do the idler, the one with the idler arm first. There's no uh, easy way around this. Have to get down in here. Start everything up through. Because of the angle, because of the baffling back here. Yeah, that started. You guys get the general idea. Basically, you get to do this uh, three more times. And once you get them up through, always, always start another one. Now these are, uh, I think this is four inch long carriage bolts I got, half inch. These are a little on the long side, but honestly I don't think they'll hurt anything. I just have to use a deep wall socket to tighten them down. one guys. Now this one here if you ever go to actually change the belt you have to take the left front one out because the belt actually goes on both sides of it. There's, there is some shortcuts to just changing a belt. Basically, you loosen them all, and you take out the left front one, and you can tip it up enough to get the belt around everything. Let me stop the recording and restart it, because this is probably getting long. Eh, only about eight minutes on this one, nine minutes. And uh, I'll tighten up the bolts. I want to make sure that idler pulley is actually sitting right. And then I will come back at you guys here. 
Alright, see if it works now. Take one washer out and let it free up a little bit, I guess. Wash Seems to be working. Nope, so. Only four. Hitting on. Oh, it's hitting on. Ah. Oh, I'll say. It's hitting on the carriage head bolt for the center spindle. But, since I left enough stack in there, I can go up over top of that. Can you pick up on it slightly? See what it was, this last washer is just a little too tight for it. So put this on here. The only thing I see is I really should probably have a uh well maybe not. A touch longer belt is what I was getting ready to say. So I'm not gonna be able to double nut this. I'm not gonna be able to put the washer in it either. Might be able to double nut it. Is that three quarter? It's 
Something like a 15,000 Spieler gap. I mean, that looks about right to me. I don't know about you guys. to the point of this mission where we put it on the tractor and try it. Yeah. I believe we are what we consider done. Minus I'm going to put a, a cotter pin in there. Actually, I think I might need to slide the whole bar over. Well, I'll have to see. See what we need to do here. But basically, somebody tried to widen it out. Probably to clear the rear tires on something. Yeah, it definitely needs to swing over that way. This side's bent a little bit too. Try to handle that better once it's on the tractor. Oh, I see what they did. Okay. Come in here, guys. Be able to zoom you guys in. Okay, is it going to focus good enough? Ah, come on, really? Basically, more or less, somebody put a pin out here. Try to widen this out. And I bet you they did it to clear the... They had wider rear tires on a tractor with a 40-inch deck. And they did that to clear it. So what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to go get me a small punch. And drive that pin out of there and then I'm going to drive it over to the other side and then I can put that back down through and a cotter pin over there because that's what keeps these rear wheels from walking side to side and then I'll I'll take this wheel back off and I'll take a pipe or something and bend it over so it tracks straight or it doesn't have to be perfect but it should be a little better than uh than what we got there. So I'll probably do a lot of that off camera unless you guys really want to see it, but by that point I'm already going to be done and way gone. So, alrighty guys, I'll show you guys putting it on the tractor though when I get there. And I'm going to put you guys on the charger in that amount of time. Mm -hmm. Alrighty guys, so basically I am done with the deck for right now. And as you guys can tell, I did a lot since the last clip. Uh, one thing that happened was, I went to go, uh, there was a piece threaded on here. I was going to try and put a uh, knob on here. And I broke this, so I had to change it off of the old deck carriage setup. That seems pretty good. And uh, I ended up drilling a new hole on the inside here. And I put a pin in right here. Actually, I mashed it over when I was bending that back. I'll have to fix that. I can do that off camera because I uh, won't ever see that kind of load again. And I put the, the one original deck cover I have back on, belt cover. Because uh, I found out these are, that was actually a stock belt cover. Uh, the one on my 16G is actually pretty similar. Or 16G, I'm sorry. 12G has a 40 inch deck on it. That's pretty similar, so. I'll keep my eyes peeled for a right hand deck cover. The one for this is probably at uh, the fella's house I bought this from, but uh, I ain't worried about it. I bought it from him like two years ago. <laughs> so. Alrighty, guys, more or less. Once I, once I fix that, we'll. We'll start up the 812 back here and we'll put the deck on and uh, see what she sounds like. Very noisy like before. Mm -hmm. 
did forget to mention I did get that. It's pretty straight now. It's not bad. And I did change this clip out. Let me hammer that back over. So, to the 812. Who wants to see a cold start? Even though it's like 70 degrees out. Uh, nothing over there can get in the way. This tire is low, but good enough to roll. Well, I better check the oil. What's the seat pan held up on now? Uh, probably the bracket underneath. Looks like it's caught on the shift plate. How and what? Okay. The heck with checking the oil. I'll fix that when I get it in the shop. You almost need two hands to start a cold because you have to go. You have to throttle up and back down. I have to fix that seat pan now. That's the first time I did that. The other thing is, let's prop this door open. And maybe I can make a one and done shot in. Can you prop? Aha. Alright. Dude. We'll go low range. The first gear. Uh, so you break it off. Yeah. Gonna make it one shot here. Gonna hit my brick. Enough for government work. Never, ever hook the drive shaft up while it's running. All right. So let me hook the pins up on here. I haven't decided if I'm going to put the lift assist back on this or not because I don't see me really needing it on this tractor. But what do I know? So, all right. Be back when I get it hooked up, guys.